Today we're talking about wheel repair. And I definitely have had my fair share of damaged wheels. If you don't know me, my name is Fielding Shredder. I love drifting, and drifting is extremely abusive on equipment, especially things like wheels and drivetrain parts. So today we're gonna see if it's better to buy new wheels or fix your old wheels uh, or just drive better or don't go drive so hard. Just kidding, that's never an option. Today, what I'm working on is an XXR wheel. This is a older style that is now discontinued. So normally I would say 100% a cheap wheel under $200 is just a throwaway. It's something that you can just toss and buy a new one and don't waste any time. As soon as it's out of balance or has giant cracks in it like these, then it's time to toss that thing and get a new one. However, in my case, on this particular wheel, I absolutely love these wheels. I am a sucker for five spokes, and I prefer a straight spoke and a concave face design. So getting wheels that are that design is very difficult. They don't make a whole lot of them. And even the name brand wheels that are expensive, there aren't very many, if any, really that I've seen that I really love. And these I just happen to really fall in love with, and it sucks that they stopped making them. What the hell are you doing, XXR? Stick with me here, we're gonna attempt to put this thing back together. Now, a really fortunate thing for me is I was able to save the pieces of wheel that broke off. So you'll notice here I have a pretty gnarly crack, but the material is all still there, so this can be bent back and then welded straight together. And then this side is going to be, you know, would be a disaster, but luckily I was able to save the pieces so I'll just kind of Lego this sucker back together and then weld it up and it should be hopefully okay. The rest of the wheel is pretty much undamaged. It doesn't have any major bends or flat spots or anything like, oh, there's one actually. Yeah, small flat spot there. It happens. So it's part of drifting, unfortunately, being so rough on the equipment and you know, when you dip off a tire uh, or hit a rumble strip or hit another driver, whatever the case is, it happens. So I'm gonna try and fix this thing and then hopefully it doesn't take me too long and cost me too much and not really end up worth it. But for me to fix this wheel is important because I can't buy them again. So I think it's also important to mention that I am in no way a professional wheel repair person. I have not really ever done this before. I have no idea what I'm doing. I know how to fabricate things. I know how to weld, I know how to weld aluminum. So I know how metal works, but I've not done wheel repair. This is also just pure DIY. Like I don't have any of the proper tools I don't have a balancer. I don't have whatever they use to make these perfectly round and smooth and nice. I'm just gonna do it how I can. It's a drift car, it's a drift wheel. It doesn't have to be perfect. So if this is going on like a Ferrari or Lamborghini or something, then obviously take it to a pro. And if you don't care so much or it doesn't matter if it's balanced, then give it a crack. I figure I can't really lose any money doing this, just time. So if I get to the end and it sucks and it doesn't work, then I'll just take it to a wheel repair guy and pay him and, oh well, lesson learned. Just thought I would mention that because a lot of the things I'm gonna be doing are maybe not the right way. So please, if you are a wheel repair guy or you know more than I do about this or you have any pro tips, leave them in the comments, let us all know. I'll be happy to add them to the description. You know, we're all here to learn. I certainly love learning how to do things easier because I'm all about efficiency and easy repair and I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. I want to go drive. I hate working on my car. I hate repairing stuff that I smash, but I have to do it for the greater good, which is driving. So that's my goal here. So yeah, let me know if there's something I'm doing wrong or there's something I could do better or there's any techniques you know that I don't know. And that way, next time I have to do this, it'll be a little easier. First things first, just cut off the valve stem here. Let's go over what tools we're going to use. The tools are pretty simple. We've got a small grinder with a polishing wheel and a paint removing wheel. Got a blowtorch. This is a pretty cool tool. This is called a wheel wrench and it's got a very special design there that is intended to fit over the lip of these and that is going to be what helps you bend a wheel back straight. It's got two different ends depending on the shape of your wheel. Some dikes. This is just simply to cut the valve stem off and then a grinder with cutting and flapping wheels. This would just melt as soon as I start to weld it anyway. So there's no reason to keep it on there. 
if this was over here maybe and the or the crack was you know away from it then i would say just probably leave it on but in this case because it's right next to the crack it's got to go those are cheap to replace anyway so toss that so the next thing i really need to do is basically get all the paint off of this whole area and off of these things so that's what this is for and the paint remover one just kind of get in here and just get as cleaned up as you can where you're going to weld and you know at least a centimeter around the crack line or anywhere you're going to weld is ideal even bigger is even better so that's what i'm going to do next and then we'll go into the rebending and welding process put a mask on this shit is gross Next thing I'm gonna do here is try and get this bent a little bit straighter. And so I see the, the wheel repair wrench goes in here like this. It's a little tight. I might end up having to grind on it a little bit, but let's see how much I can do without any heat. So we're getting closer already. I think I need to grind a little bit off of this tool to get it in there can't really get much leverage on it okay i've got the tool modified now a bit i just had to grind this face down a touch to allow it to fit over this slight bulky part of the spoke there so now i'm just going to slide it in kind of there it is i want to get it over here and kind of pry up Oh yeah, okay, so that's where the root of the crack is. So now, the material is much closer to where it needs to be. Still need to get all this paint off, but now, you see, I couldn't see that crack. It just looked like it stopped right there, but it went all the way over here. So now that I can see that, might just end up breaking this piece off yeah yeah that's the better way to do it because now I can kind of shape this in the vise and get it close clean up some of these edges and then I'll be able to get that nicely fitted and welded on much better than it was it's pretty damn close That's pretty much as good as I'm gonna get it, I think. So I've got my aluminum magnet here. Just kidding. This is a pretty cool tool here. It's just a magnet with a little snake thing that goes to a clamp. So you can see I've got it clamped here. It's pretty well in position. So got my ground on, got everything ready to go. So I'm gonna weld this sucker up and I'm probably just gonna put a tack right here for now and get that to where it's gonna stay and then I'll try and get the other one in there in case I need to move it a little bit to make the other one fit good. Well, that went surprisingly well. So you can see my welds there, not too bad. The black stuff is from contamination. This is pretty dirty and I didn't clean it the best. And it's very porous cast aluminum. It's, plus it's been painted and powder coated and run on a damn drift car. Now is when I'm gonna hit up on this part. I did crack that weld, which is fine. I can re-weld it, but now you can see that this this line is fairly straight and the arc is pretty straight the radius i should say so now back to just welding all this up 
And then the final step will be to grind it smooth to where it kind of, you know, looks and acts like a wheel and the bead will seat on it fine and all that. You may wonder what I'm doing right now with no rod in my hand, no filler rod. I'm brazing the weld in. So after I've got the bead, I'm going back over it and just kind of widening the, the spread of the heat. And it's also kind of melding in the aluminum to where it's not just a sharp, small surface area, it's spreading it out. I don't know if that's gonna work or not, but I'm hoping that that's going to make it where the cracks load is kind of spread out a bit and it'll be a little stronger for another impact because let's be honest it's going to happen again <laughs> it's just a matter of time but the longer i can keep this wheel from getting screwed up again the better so here is the weld you can see where i kind of smoothed it out with the torch you don't see the defined stack of dimes if you will you'll see it's kind of more spread out on the back here you can see I kind of started to do the same thing, not quite as much, but um, I'm going to go through here and, you know, I have to recreate this shape, this corner or this, this edge. So I have to kind of grind up through there and then obviously smooth this part out, smooth this part out and get it as close as I can. It's not going to be perfect. I'm not expecting it to be perfect, but close enough to where it holds the tire on the wheel and it holds air. Good to go. All right, I'm going to move on to this part. I'm not gonna record this because it's the exact same thing. Get the piece in, this, in its spot, tack it, weld it, blah, blah, blah. Kind of smoothed out. It's not even gonna need a whole lot of finish shaping, which is really the goal. You see the radius here is fairly smooth. The edge obviously needs some cleanup, but it's not gonna be too bad. And then the inside same thing just need to kind of knock this edge down get it to be this shape so that the bead sits nice and smooth on there so this is really just a process of time with the grinder that's basically as good as i'm gonna mess with it it's not perfect by any means, but it's pretty damn close. This is nice and round. Got this lip back. The spoke is fully formed. A little bit of weld shape on the outsides, but that's all right. It's not gonna be perfect, I knew it wasn't. This turned out pretty fantastic right here. I might knock this corner off just a bit, make it a little easier to mount tires. And then this edge, is more or less there it's not perfect again but it's uh close enough inside here nice and smooth if i wanted to get nitpicky i could go and add a little more weld there a little more material and then smooth it out but this edge is pretty good i could actually knock that down a touch more same thing on the inside here this one turned out really nice nice and smooth straight yeah, pretty good. So the last step here, I'm gonna use this polishing wheel. These are super, super awesome tools. And this is just simply a way to smooth out the kind of rough edges of the flapper wheel on the wheel itself here. And then I'll be able to paint it and then I'm done. 100% finished, ready to mount a tire and go drifting. Okay, next step, get some CLR. Sorry, no, simple green, yeah. And we're gonna just clean it. Not a deep scrub, but just try and get the funk off the surface. And then I'm gonna scuff the wheel up and spray paint it. All right, got that sucker all clean. Last step is just to scuff it with some Scotch-Brite. And this is just so that you can get the paint to stick. I'm not gonna go through this whole process and then just leave the wheel like this. I'm gonna go ahead and repaint it. And if you've seen some of my other videos, you've seen that I just refinish these once a year with spray paint. They originally were powder coated, but I found the 
cost and the process to not be worth it. It's, again, a drift car, it's gonna get abused and destroyed and there's gonna be 50 tires mounted on this thing before the end of the year. So if it were a nicer wheel or a nicer finish or, you know, a nicer car, <laughs> I don't know. It, uh, in that case, maybe you'd spend some money on the powder coating, but when I've spent that money in the past, it just didn't seem worth it. So I'm just gonna go through here, scuff this sucker up and spray paint it. So once you've sanded the wheel as much as you want, you wanna take some acetone and a clean rag and just wipe the wheel down everywhere you're gonna paint, especially. This is just gonna get rid of any of the grease or surface dirt or anything on there just to help the paint stick. And since I'm gonna do a full paint job on this thing, I'm gonna wipe the entire wheel down and that way get a nice fresh coat. You can see it's starting to turn yellow from the many events of abuse. And the final step, I'm gonna paint this. But you can see once the paint's on it, it's a pretty decent repair. Here we go, final product. The wheel is finished. It's not perfect, but it's pretty damn good. And if you don't look too close, you can't even tell where it was. So <laughs> you can see there's definitely some a little bit ripply marks and everything, but this is definitely gonna hold the tire, no problem. This whole project took me about four and a half, five hours, start to finish. I used maybe about five to ten dollars worth of argon. I used three welding rods, which is nothing. I used half a can of spray paint, so a couple bucks there. Let's see, what else did I use? The grinder, some electricity. All in all, maybe under $30 worth of materials to repair the wheel and then just my time. So depending on what your time's worth, this may or may not be worth it to you. But for me, I think this, is, uh, this definitely worked out compared to paying 150 to 200 a wheel to get it repaired, and especially since this wheel is irreplaceable. So again, if this was a wheel that I could just buy a new one from XXR, I would have absolutely thrown it in the trash and just got a new one and gone about my business and lived life doing other things that you, we know she needs. Now I will say that wheel repair wrench that I bought was pretty much useless on this project. I think it's much better for steel wheels. So if you had a steel wheel that you needed to rebend, you could heat the steel up, bend it with that, and that would be a lot better use of that tool. But on a cast aluminum wheel, it ended up just cracking it and breaking off chunks of it. So completely useless. That was a waste of an investment. But here we go, finished product. Hopefully you guys learned something. I certainly did. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Let me know. And if I did anything wrong or anything that you would suggest that I do to make things better, please let me know as well. We're all here to learn. And I don't want to do this again, but I'm going to, of course. I'm going to crash this thing again, I'm sure. But, you know, anything I can do to make this process faster is going to be better. Thanks for watching.